because I'm here to tell you that the dad bod is ruining you, it's ruining your kids, and it's ruining the community, it's ruining this country. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. Hey friends, welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. My name is Bedros Coolian, and I've got crazy news for you. I have discovered the most dangerous man in the world. That's right, I've discovered the most dangerous man in the world. I'm gonna tell you all about this man, but first, I got to tell you about Bedros Koulian Live, September 8th and 9th. Mark those dates on your calendar, September 8th and 9th in Costa Mesa, California. We're getting together for two days. All of you who watch and listen to the Bedros Koulian Show are invited to come out. We have made the general admission price point very affordable for everyone. And it doesn't matter where you are. People from many different countries every year come out to my live events. This one is for everyone who likes to listen to my podcast, watch my podcast, and wants to get together with like-minded people. So mark those dates on your calendar. Uh, by the time this video is out, this episode is out, you should be able to register. And of course, the link will be available at bedroskoolian.com. So with that said, let me tell you guys about the most dangerous man in the world. So there I was the other day having an amazing steak dinner at a very formal steakhouse here in beautiful Southern California. And when I walked into the restaurant, I took notice that there were some men who were sitting at a table enjoying their steak dinner. As, as we walked to our table, we sat in a very big dining area and I noticed again, there was many tables and all of these men who were sitting at those tables had one thing in common. They were all pear shaped. They all looked like they had dad bods. They had these, these, round little bellies and they had sharp pointy little titties and they had narrow shoulders and i'm not here to rip on anyone but i am here to tell you that as i observe what was happening in this beautiful high-end restaurant i realized that i'm surrounded by dad bods right and I don't know how you feel about dad bods. I know there was some surveys out there that talked about how women find dad bods attractive. I'm also going to tell you something about that in just a minute, and we'll get to it. But I realized that the most dangerous type of man on the planet is the man who carries the dad bod. And I'm going to explain to you guys why this is. Because as I'm sitting there enjoying my beautiful steak dinner, I'm realizing that these men are insecure that they were having a hard time making eye contact with one another when they were talking. And since I'm a very observant person, it wasn't lost on me that the insecurity was a byproduct of their body types. Many of them were wearing collared shirts, like dress shirts that are buttoned up, and you could tell that they were uncomfortable in their skin. You could also tell that because all of them carry the same type of dad bod, that they felt that this is now normalized and it's okay to walk around looking like a schlep rock. And I'm here to tell you guys that it is not because you are the most dangerous kind of man if you are carrying a dad bod and if you're either proud of it or you feel like there's nothing wrong with it because there's everything wrong with it. Because I'm here to tell you that the dad bod is ruining you, it's ruining your kids, and it's ruining the community it's ruining this country. And I'm gonna break that down for you because I don't wanna just make a bold statement like that without giving you the reasons behind it, right? So when a man carries a dad bod, when a man is 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight, and he's shaped like a pear or a pumpkin, right? Skinny little legs, uh, wide midsection and belly, narrow shoulders, no pec muscles, just all titties. What you end up doing is you end up putting your body at risk. And I'm talking about these are men in their 30s and 40s. Like, I'm 48 years old. I can look at another man and gauge his age. These were dudes in their 30s and 40s who had no business being built like that. However, they have accepted it. And we'll get to the reason why in just a moment. But you become a liability to humanity when you have a dad bod, when you carry 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight. And you're probably wondering, well, that's a bold statement. What do you mean I'm the most dangerous man in the world? Well, you're dangerous because you are not an asset. In that moment, I realized that if something went off in that restaurant, if there was either a, a mass shooting or if there was someone that had to be restrained, and many of you have heard my story about how I was on a, 
on an airplane several years ago, sitting there in first class, minding my business, when I had to restrain a motherfucker who was a flight risk by getting him in a chokehold and myself and another gentleman were able to take him down and zip tie him like the flight attendants wanted us to. And we ended up sitting security with him in the back. The irony there is that though I had my first class ticket, I spent the rest of the four hours of the five hour flight sitting in the way back because they wanted to put the bad guy away from the cockpit. Uh, sitting security and he- hearing this guy talk about how he was going to kill us. And what I'm here to tell you that as I'm looking around at that restaurant, I, I, it was, I was hard pressed to realize that there, there's no ally for me. If something went down, there was no ally that I could count on to help me secure people, to help me fight off a bad guy. And this isn't about what I'm looking for. I'm realizing that each one of these people, they have a wife or a girlfriend with them. They probably want to protect that wife or girlfriend. They probably, and the tables where there was all men, I imagine they have a spouse at home, maybe some of them have kids at home, and they want to be able to make it back to their kids, but they've become a liability. And if you think I'm being a pessimist by saying, look, what if something happened in that steakhouse? I mean, we're hearing about people doing wacky things in wacky places these days, right? So to me, it's not that far-fetched. To me, it's not far-fetched for a man to be prepared for anything. But this is beyond being prepared to fight or to defend yourself or to be able to take someone down. This is straight up, when I say ruining your life, you are literally pre-diabetic. You are hypertensive, as in high blood pressure. You probably already have your arteries getting clogged up with cholesterol. And at the age of 30 or 40, living a sedentary life and just keeping yourself fit enough to stay alive is not enough. You may have all seen that video, uh, and while it wasn't a man, it was a woman. I think it was a woman maybe in her late 30s, early 40s. She was massively overweight. She took her child out of the car, put the child in the stroller in the parking lot, and the stroller started to roll away, and she fell and was unable to get up. If you've seen that video and how many times she attempted to get up, because she was so overweight. It was so sad seeing that stroller heading towards the thoroughfare where there was cars coming by. Thankfully, there was someone who came running through and stopped the stroller, brought it back to her, and of course helped her up. If you cannot manage your own weight, your own strength, and if you are diabetic, pre-diabetic, because you're probably thinking, well, dude, I don't, my doctor hasn't told me anything. Yeah, well, doesn't mean you're not pre-diabetic, does not mean you're not pre-hypertensive, does not mean that your bones are becoming more porous, because if you know anything about exercising and working out, then you know that your body develops stronger bones when you strengthen your muscles, right? And many decades from now, you're gonna want those stronger bones, because we've all heard about grandma and grandpa slipping in the shower and breaking their hip, and ending up in some kind of hospice for the rest of their natural lives because they were unable to recover. What I want to do is make sure that I'm not a liability to my family today by being fat, overweight, sick, having the precursors of disease. Cancer grows in obesity and fat, right? We know that hypertension, heart disease, We know that diabetes, all of these things are promoted through obesity. And the most dangerous man in America today, because if you take all of the dad bods, I started doing the research on this, and you take all of those dad bods and you bring them all together in one state, that state would be larger than Texas. I did the research. Tell me that's not a dangerous, dangerous way to live, right? And it would be like a country larger than Australia. The number of men that we have that are pear-shaped, that are weak, that can't carry their own weight, that are hypertensive, that are pre-diabetic, that have cholesterol issues, at such a young age, is at an all-time high. And if you have a family, you are ruining them as well, not just your health, but by putting yourself at risk and putting yourself in a position where you're unable to provide for them, you now put yourself in a position where they have to figure out what to do with you. 
when you have that heart attack, when you become diabetic, when you might have that stroke. And all of this is preventable. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So the reason I'm talking about this is when I say, you know, these dad bods, these, these dudes, if you're one of them, you're carrying that extra weight, you're ruining not only yourself, but also your kids. How often do you tell your kids that, hey, you should exercise, you should eat right, you should care about your health, you should get out and get some sun, you should run, you should work out. But you know your kids are not listening to the words you say, they're modeling the actions that you live. And if you're carrying excessive weight, if you're inactive, and then you're blaming the fact that, well, I'm too busy, I have to provide for my family, I don't have the time to do it, I don't know where to start, I'm here to tell you that all of those are excuses for procrastination. And fellas, I say this to you because I love you. You are a danger to yourself, to your own personal health, you're a danger to your kids and your family because you are a poor role model and example of how your kids are going to end up. Now, I'm gonna tell you something, and if you're like, no, 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 my kids wanna end up looking like me, I'm gonna give them an advantage. Untrue. You guys all know that we run a, a, an event for fathers and sons called the Squire Program. At the Squire Program, we talk about keeping your body fit, healthy, having mental and emotional health as well, we talk about having a morning routine that sets you up to get W's, wins in your life. And we talk about how your soft habits today can become hard habits tomorrow if you continue to live a life of poor discipline and laziness. And at some point at the Squire program, when we separate the sons from the fathers and the instructors that go with the sons are taking them through a different evolution and some exercises, I get to spend time with the fathers. And I'm the one that has to tell these fathers that, hey, you look like a pear, your son looks like a pear. You look like a pumpkin, your son looks like a pumpkin. You are tall and lanky, your son is tall and lanky. You are fit and jacked, your son is fit and jacked. Because the reality is, the apple does not fall far from the tree, and you know that to be true. And so I'm curious why it is then that you allow yourself to carry this dad bod, to be 30, 40, 50, 100 pounds overweight, and I know no one has brought it up to you, and I'm the one willing to bring it up to you, because when I go to a steakhouse and I observe my peers, I realize that they are letting inertia take over. The momentum of life, the inertia of life. And what ends up happening is you develop these unfortunate habits of getting your Starbucks, getting something sugary first thing in the morning, eating shitty food, and then going out to have lunch with your friends from work and eating more shitty food, staying dehydrated all day, living off coffee and soda probably and energy drinks. You know that to be true. Poisoning your body, letting it fall apart and atrophy, letting it get diseased only to hear in your late 40s and 50s that you've got what, prostate cancer? That you've got heart disease, early onset heart disease, diabetes? That you might lose your, lose your foot because of diabetes, is that worth it? What is the trauma that that's gonna deliver to your kids? And I share this with you because then when I talk about it, you're also ruining our country. Every single one of us individually as we come together as a community in a country, represent the United States. And today, more than 60% of Americans are obese. Listen, some might say this is politically incorrect, but I'm here to tell you that us men are the leaders. Us men get to set the standards. Us men set the bar. And y'all have set the bar so low in life that it's become accepted that it is okay to look like a pear or a pumpkin so early on in life. And the excuse of I don't have time, that I'm too busy providing and protecting my family, that is, that is an absolute lie. Listen, man, for the last 20 years, I've been building companies. I've been keeping myself in the red. And in that time, I constantly make time for the things that matter. 
And most people will make excuses for the things that they don't value. So you're either making excuses or you're going to make the time because you certainly know the score of your favorite football team, baseball team, basketball team. You know everybody's stats. You know who won. You know all the shows to watch on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime. You certainly binge watch the fuck out of everything and anything just so you can talk about it at the water cooler. But then you'll tell me in the comments that you don't have time, you're tired, you're too busy providing. That is an excuse. You will absolutely make time for that you value and you will absolutely make excuses for that you don't. And I'm letting you know that you don't value your health, my friend. Now let's talk about this. Because in 2014, 2015, surveys started to pop out that women are actually attracted to dad bods. What an absolute lie that is. If you think that women are actually attracted to dad bods, bro, you're, you're nuts. Every woman is genetically coded to look for the most physically fit, financially stout, mentally strong, intelligent man. Because they realize that is the man that they want to have a child with, build a family with, because that is the man that is going to ensure their survival at the highest level. However, what you see on the survey is different than what I just told you. You see, because it is the majority of the insecure women out there who are responding to surveys like that. And for them, they do want a dad bod, but not because they're attracted to the dad bod, but because the guy who carries himself 30, 40, 50, 100 pounds overweight, he's more docile. He's easier to control and manage. And the truth is, he sets and accepts a low standard, which means she can be fat and floppy as well. And what does that mean? He's less likely to step out on her. He's less likely to argue with her. He's more likely to fall in line. Now, again, I don't have proof that the majority of the women who responded to these surveys were insecure, but I can tell you at 48 years old and having been around a lot of men and women in my time that the women that I've talked to the women that I've experienced in terms of communication what their needs and wants are all the confident ones all the ones that have a path in life all the secure women are looking for a dude who was fit athletic financially stout intelligent able to solve problems because genetically that guy is desirable for an insecure woman she wants the broken winged the broken horned guy who is limping along in life and all of you dudes out there who are carrying that dad bod have put yourself in a position to only be attractive to insecure out of shape low self-esteem women and that's unfortunate because I believe, and this might be a little old school mentality, but I believe that it is a man's job to raise the expectations of everyone around him. It is our job as leaders to raise the standards of everybody around us. That includes our kids. That includes our friends and peers. That includes our wives, right? And if we can do that, we are now building a community and one community after another ends up being a city or a county or a country. And it is our jobs to make America great again. It ain't going to be Trump. It ain't going to be Biden. It's going to be you and me. But unless you're willing to let go of this mindset that the dad bod is okay to carry because all of your other peers have the same type of body and therefore it's become acceptable, I'm here to tell you that it is very damaging to who you are in terms of your personal health. By the way, you probably hate yourself too. If you wanna be honest, I mean, you probably hate yourself. There's a good amount of self-hate because a man knows, a man knows that there's a certain level of potential in him, a certain level of potential to make money. There's a certain level of potential in you to be fit. There's a certain level of potential in terms of love. There's a certain level of potential in terms of fulfillment. And when a man is far from those potentials, he begins to hate himself. He begins to experience 
guilt. He begins to experience anxiety and depression. That is your conscience speaking to you. Because when you are complacent and lazy, undisciplined, you become depressed, anxious, and carry self-hate. And if you're carrying self-hate, how do you think you're gonna love anybody around you? You can't. You can't show love to your friends. You can't show love to your wife. You can't show love to your kids, not to the depth and to the measure that those people need. And this is why I believe divorces happen. You hate yourself so much that you transfer that hate to your kids, your friends, your work, your spouse, your relationship. And I believe it is a man's duty, it is a man's obligation to keep himself fit and athletic. But it goes beyond that, right? Because if you know anything about me, I don't necessarily believe that there's a God out there. I do believe in universal consciousness. I do believe when someone says God, I just hear the universe, right? So let's just use the word God and whatever your belief system is, I'm on board with that right now. If God created you and he created you in his image, because I don't necessarily believe in God does not mean I don't understand the terminologies and that I don't understand the Quran or the Bible or that I don't understand spirituality and religion because I'm a man that does research. I'm a man that studies and I'm a man that thinks for myself. And so if God created you in his image, would you ever disrespect your creator that way by poisoning your body with the Cheetos that you're eating, with the energy drink that you're sucking down, with the slices of pizza that you're stuffing down your gullet so that you can have those floppy gelatinous little titties? Would you ever disrespect your creator that way? If you were truly a godly man, like you say you are, you go to church every Sunday, Hell, you even go on Wednesdays because you were that extra kind of guy. What's up with you, bro? What's up with you that you are disrespecting your creator? What a shame that is. How unfortunate is that? Could you imagine that? That a man who believes, a godly man who believes in a higher power created him in his image and said, I will bless you with potential. Not that I will make you the best version of yourself, but I will bless you with potential. And your greatest work in life is to reach that potential, financial potential, health potential, mental potential, love potential, relational potential, physical potential. And instead, you poison your body, you erode your muscles, you welcome disease, and with disease and obesity and fat and lethargy comes depression and anxiety and the mental disease. First, you begin to disease your body from the inside physically, and then it carries into your mental and emotional state, fellas. And so whatever the argument is, I've got you cornered. Because I believe that the true meaning of life is fulfillment of potential and self-mastery. And if you watch or listen to the show, then you know that to be true. Then you, I'm guessing you agree with me, unless you just have so much free time on your hands, you like to watch this show episode after episode, but not necessarily agree or apply what we teach here, right? And God damn it, I'm telling you this because I love you, I care for you. I want to be able to respect you, but I cannot respect you. And that's the next thing I want to talk about is that God doesn't respect you if you are disrespecting him by not living in his image that what he created you for. If he created you with a certain level of potential and you are not working hard to reach that potential. And if you're like, but I am Bedros, I am working hard to reach my potential that God put in me. You are with a fat floppy body that's diseased, that has low energy, that has no strength, that has no ability of endurance to go through the hard times, the inevitable hardships of life. You have to be physically strong. I'm not talking about just be jacked so that you can look good in a fucking tank top and three inch shorts. 
I'm talking about being fit and athletic, having endurance so that you can be a role model to your kids, so that you could be a role model to your community and country, so that you will have a lengthy, healthy life without being a liability to your family, so that God will not feel disrespected as he made you in his image, right? So where is it? And if you want my respect, and if you want my respect, and you want the respect of others who have made it in life, who are successful, who are doing something great, who are working hard, 20 fucking years I've been working towards my greatest potential in every category of life. So what gives you the right to be respected at the same level that I am? It doesn't. You can't, and therefore I can't respect you. I want to respect you. I will love you from afar as a brother. I will message to you, I will speak into you, but I cannot respect you. And I need you to respect yourself first because if you did, then you would do these things that we're gonna talk about next. So what now, what do we do now? It's simple enough, you exercise you exercise daily, you exercise first thing in the morning. I'm telling you, if you're the kind of person that is exercising at night, that better be your second workout of the day because you are not gonna have enough energy, enough willpower, enough thunder in the gas tank to bring it in the evenings after a long work day. And therefore, you are again putting your body last. And when you put your body last, your body is the first domino that your mind and your emotions and your money and your relationships follow. That's just the case. Now, is that to say that everyone who's lean and jacked also makes a lot of money, also has great relationships? Absolutely not. But those same traits that it takes to burn fat, build muscle, to eat clean, to fuel your body, to stay focused and disciplined, to delay gratification, all of those things, by the way, is what's required to be financially successful as an entrepreneur or as someone who's working his way up in a career. Like if you really want to do well in life, in your marriage, in your relationships, with your kids, with your family, in love, in friendships, business, you ought to consider working out and eating right. Because when you do, and you make the focus on your abs. Like I want abs, I want, I want to see muscle separation, I want to see veins and vascularity across my body. When you make that your focus, see first you're gonna think, this guy's very vain, he's very visually committed to how the male physique looks like, untrue. To get to that physique, it takes a high level of focus, discipline, consistency, delayed gratification, sacrifice. And it takes all those traits for a great marriage. It takes all those traits for a great successful business. It takes all those traits to win your sovereignty and financial freedom. It takes all those traits to be loved and respected and admired by your peers. The reality is people don't respect an undisciplined, unfocused, inconsistent person who flip-flops in life. They just don't, you know that. Everybody, everybody respects someone who's focused, disciplined, fit, financially stout, able to articulate, intelligent, someone who knows how to communicate like, look at all these things are a byproduct of getting fit because, again, focus, discipline, delayed gratification, consistency, all of those things are a byproduct of fitness and they're a byproduct of a successful man. So I'm here to tell you, fellas, if you want to stay fat, pear-shaped, pumpkin-shaped, to be a bad role model to your kids and family, to put yourself in harm's way in terms of disease, if you want that domino to lead to mental and emotional weakness, you want to showcase what real complacency and laziness looks like, great man, keep rocking that dad bod. But don't be surprised when you're not getting the respect, when you're not where you wanna be in life, 
when your kids are not listening to you in terms of a path to walk in life because they don't respect you. Even your creator doesn't respect you because he made you in his image and you've chosen to poison that image, to poison that vehicle. So if there's anything you can do, it is to eat right, it is to train hard, it is to keep a positive mental attitude, it is to focus on becoming a battle-ready savage man. And when you make that commitment to becoming a battle-ready savage man, you will have the money, the meaning, the legacy, the focus, the relationship, and the sovereignty that you're looking for. And above all, you'll have the respect, the respect of the people that you look up to, you will now become a peer of them. So friends, thank you for watching and listening to this episode of the Bedros Koulian Show. And remember, as always, average is the enemy. Success is your responsibility and change can take place in an instant if you are willing to flip the switch. I love you all. Talk soon.